There are not many times that still images mixed with a tiny bit of ambiance really scare me. But Decay, my god, this game did it so well. What is going on guys, GHA and Visa, and welcome to a new video where today we're going to be talking about the indie game Decay. Now, um, this may become a new series because I've always wanted to do a series on Xbox indie games. And I've noticed that the Xbox indie game servers are actually turning off next year and I will be super sad when I see them go and there are so many great games on there and I thought I need to choose one game just to pilot this just to show that there are some fantastic indie games out there on the Xbox indie games that you should download and buy before the servers go bye bye because well I've got in contact with some of the people that I want to do videos about and they have either not responded or they're not going to actually release them on PC or any other console. So this is your genuine last chance to fucking play these games. And uh, I'm going to tell you why I think Decay and its sequel are worth your money. I'm going to be very minimal in telling you about the story because, well, the story is very minimal itself, but over time it becomes much more apparent what's going on, who you are, who these people are, well, people in quotation marks, ooh, and why the fuck is there a doll there? What in Lord Buddha's butthole is it doing there? Why is it there? Who are you and what are you? But here's what I will tell you. In Decay, part one, I'm only telling you bits of part one. You wake up in a noose. You're hung by a noose in a bathroom of an apartment. And you don't know why you're there, why you hung yourself, why there's writing on the walls, why the apartment is empty, why you're there. Oh, so much mystery. After exiting the bathroom, you go into a room and you find out about people's names and, well, you'll have to play to find out the rest for yourself. Decay is a point and click horror game. Well, I'd say more suspense thriller as there is no genuine horror. There's horrifying images and very, very bloody scenes. Well, uh, well. The reason I say well is, is because well, it's mainly still images you're gonna see through this. It's like having a PowerPoint presentation that you scroll through and at times there are video and at times there are interactable objects. Cause you can go through doors, but of course that just fades in and fades back out. But there are interactable puzzles and I must say, apart from the ball puzzle, if you played the game, you understand that ball puzzle in the final part, part four is fucking disgusting. I had to check a guide for that. Me and my friend Tom, we played it together. I had to check a guide for that. My fucking God. Fuck the ball puzzle. But besides the ball puzzle, my god, these puzzles are fantastic. They may be super simple at times, but when you work them out, it's one of those satisfying feelings of, ah, oh, that's what it is. Ah, oh, fair play. That's smart. The way you control the game is the left analog stick to move the cursor, A to interact, Y to open up a menu because you actually collect items and some you can combine and some you can use in the world. I did notice some items you picked up were only used once or even sometimes not at all. Interesting. And the left and right triggers, they respectively slow down and speed up your cursor if you're say doing a certain puzzle and you want to do it fast or if you want to take your time. But there's one reason why I've chosen this game to be my first indie game, why should you buy this? series thing majig fuck the atmosphere this game gives off is fucking incredible even though it was still images and you had to use the d-pad to move around the room that you're in i was so scared of what was around the corner S things like playing tic-tac-toe with an invisible man now invisible a demon a demigod i don't fucking know you work it out just standing in an empty hallway with the lighting just right and the slow, ambient music in the background. And I must say, the soundtrack is amazing. If you play through the entire game or just by part four, for some reason, if you wanted to do that, you can actually get a code to actually download the actual soundtrack. I said actual three times there, I think. Yeah, as you can probably tell, this is more like a commentary video than an actual review. Then again, I never said this was a review. I never said this was a review. The best way for you to see how ambient and why I think this game is so beautiful even though the graphics aren't amazing, and to be honest, at times it is quite pixely, I just love the feeling this game gives, is to watch it. So I'm gonna show you a few select scenes that I think are the best at giving off an amazingly scary feeling without going to spoilers.
What's best with the style as well is, since you're having to go from still frame to still frame technically, if you go back from one frame to another and you notice, let's say, that a door is now open that was closed, you think, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Now, this isn't really a spoiler, what I'm about to say, but I feel I just need to say, skip to here if you, if you want to skip this kind of ambience ruiner. You don't actually see any human being in this apart from one person at the end of the game. And I think that's fucking awesome. You see so many shadows and lights and that fucking doll. Fuck that fucking doll. <laughs> and one more time, I must spotlight the soundtrack because although there's only six songs, I think they're amazing and it was done by one person and here's her YouTube, please follow her. I doubt they're active anymore because they didn't even reply to me on email and Twitter to do with if this game's coming to PC. But please go and follow her because I think it's a her. Because the music that he or she created is fantastic. Like, have a few snippets. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to post the code for the soundtrack. You could find it on YouTube, but to be honest, playing the game and getting the code as a reward is such a nice reward for playing a game, especially one like this. Yes, this is a scary game, and you might be asking, are there any jump scares? Yes, but from what I can remember, the average is about one per episode. Now that is good, because obviously today's medium of horror is jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. And that's how people get, apparently, get scared. Now, a jump scares to me, just a little side tangent here, are a natural human reflex. If you don't jump scare at something, right, you're probably not going to be very good in a combat situation. By that I mean, say you get jumped or mugged or something, if someone just takes your wallet and go, oh, okay. You're a bit fucked, aren't you? Where if you jump and go, what the fuck? Then you might be able to get your wallet back or whatever, or save the lovely woman who just got mugged. Good luck with that if that ever happens. Are there things wrong with the game? Yes, and I will tell you them without going to spoilers. First of all, the endings I wasn't super satisfied with. The actual final cutscenes themselves and the things leading up to it weren't that great. The extras you unlocked by doing certain tasks, some of them majorly outweighed the others. Like, we all have a bit of concept art, really, but when you get down to it, you want, like, a little extra a little extra cutscene or a little extra gameplay mechanic or, you know, a little bit something extra besides a bit of concept art. We do like concept art, I don't know about you, but I do like me some concept art, but I don't like that as one of the big rewards of the game, especially when there's little characters involved in this game. You could complain about the resolution of this game since it was made back in 2010, I think, um, but that isn't really a stickler for me because I do actually believe this adds to the ambience and the feeling of the game because it made it look a bit more scary, not gonna lie. If you're looking for a fast-paced horror game, there's only one chase scene. Like, there, there is chasing involved, but of course you're going from still frame to still frame with the moving images, literally moving images, being the people who's trying to get you. So if you're here for a fast-paced horror game like Outlast, don't play it, because if you enter with that, you will not love it. Like, I think that's kind of why I don't like Alien Isolation. I played Outlast, loved it, then went from that to Alien Isolation. But that's the something for another day. And finally, fuck that ball puzzle. This game is in four parts on the Xbox Live Arcade, and there is a sequel called The Mare, which isn't as good, but still incredible and worth your money, uh, on Steam and the Xbox Indie Games, and on mobile devices as well. And what's even better with The Decay, The Mare, it's on sale so many times, I picked this up for 99p through Steam. What the fuck? Finally though, if you love Silent Hill, or any kind of game like that which gives such a great feeling to it, such a great feeling that you're scared, that you're worried for what's around the next corner, but you're having fun at the same time, you're dreading what's going on, but you're smiling, play this game. I urge any horror fan to play this game. You might not fully enjoy it, hell, you might not like it at all, but then I'd still feel like you should play this game. And how it's an indie game made by a Swiss team, I believe they are. Fair play to them. Fair play to them.
So everyone, this is why I believe you should buy Decay on Xbox 360. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this, and wherever you are, I hope you're doing fantastic, and I hopefully will see you in the next video.